There's three types of car people. One, the person who doesn't work on their cars and pays everyone to always work on it. <laughs> what do you mean I have to put my hand in the engine bay? Do you have to get oil underneath your nails? Bing bong! Two, you get the person who does all their work by themselves. Yeah, you know, just give me a six pack of PBR and a couple of hours in the garage. I get that car out of here. Or three, <laughs> someone like me who does a combination of both. Simple engine oil maintenance, spark plugs, brakes. Someone who can do it all by themselves, but sending the big tasks over to the professionals. All right, so the topic of this video is to explain to you guys the most common costs of owning an E36. These cars are older cars. They do come with their own set of problems. And I do want to make a disclosure to anyone who already owns one or is thinking about owning one about the costs associated with keeping this car on the road. All right, so a couple of the videos I searched online discussing the costs with this car are a little vague. A majority of them actually just talk about the parts associated with putting the car together. For me in particular, I work on my car to a certain extent. When it comes to doing things that require special tools like a press, um, I usually leave that to the professionals, so that incurs labor costs. And a lot of people online, for some reason or another, doesn't really discuss that. I do understand that labor costs depend on the places that you go, but for me in particular, I have everything listed here in this envelope. It's pretty, pretty decent size. This is all the work that I've done on the car since owning it for the last five, six years. And I wanna disclose that to you guys. I'm gonna break down the top three biggest items that cost me the most money in getting repairs done for the car and a couple of bonus items as well. That way, if you're considering buying this car or wanting to own this car and keep it on the road, you have a better understanding of what things cost. I do want to do full disclosure. I am in California. Things might be a little more expensive out here. Parts should be about the same, but regardless, I just want to give you an idea of the total cost of owning one of these cars with parts and labor included. And just an FYI for everyone who's following me so far on the channel, the E36 isn't fixed. I had to get it out of the shop. More info on that later in the video. All right, but before we discuss the numbers, I'm going back inside because it's like 40 degrees and it's cold outside. All right guys, so we're back at the house. I finally got the envelope together here. And uh, going through everything here, I was able to find all the receipts. And to be honest, I'm actually surprised at how much money I spent on the car. You really don't realize it until you actually add up all the costs. A couple hundred here, a thousand here, all of a sudden you're deep into the game. So we'll get into that a little later in the video. What I really want to address is the top three largest repair costs that I had to pay for this car so far. Again, just a backstory, I've had this car for about five, six years. It had about 140,000 miles when I first purchased it. Uh, purchased it. Ugh. When I first purchased it, it had about 140,000 miles. Just like any other old car, guys, this is a 1995, parts are gonna break apart. It's just it's just a matter of time. There's no car that's been out there for more than 30 years where you literally don't replace nothing on the car. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when I go through the labor costs, again, mind you, this is in California, and uh, labor costs can always vary from state to state, and depending on the manufacturers too. So my mechanic shop charges $115 an hour. He is a BMW specialist and that's actually significantly lower than going to an actual BMW dealership. So keep that in mind too. Well, let's go ahead and discuss the first one here. I did write a couple of notes to kind of make the video go a little quicker. So let's do a little rundown. Number one, one of the largest repairs that I had uh, was pulleys. Pulleys and power steering, I, I knocked those out all at the same time. The pulleys, as far as which ones I replaced, I got the drive, belt, accessory, and AC pulleys. Uh, the reason why those need to be replaced is because these are constantly moving parts. They put tension on the belts. These are things that are gonna eventually wear out, and that's something that should be addressed because you don't want one of those failing and potentially ruining other parts of the car. So that was one major cost for me, as well as the power steering. Power steering is known to kind of leak in these older vehicles, and that's pretty much the case that happened with me. So power steering, you'll see it, pink fluid on the floor, kind of gives you an indication that that could possibly be power steering. That can leak from the hoses or from the actual pump itself. So that's one thing I also got addressed. Parts wise, in terms of combining the pulleys and the power steering, cost me about $400 in parts. Labor was about three and a half to four hours of labor at $115 an hour. So that was about $430 in labor itself. So approximate total was about $830 for replacing all the pulleys and the power string on this car. Which in the grand scheme of things actually is pretty fair when we continue on with this video. Let's keep it going. Number two, 
BMWs are known to leak oil. It's just something that is a phenomenon that's happened with these cars forever. If you've seen my video, I kind of make a rundown and a walkthrough about the most common places where BMWs leak. If you guys haven't watched the video, I'll go ahead and link it up, up here. Valve cover gasket, oil pan gasket, potential head gasket, uh, rear main seal. Those are pretty much the most common places. Pretty much anywhere that oil comes from. In this particular repair, I had to get my oil pan gasket replaced, which is probably one of the, if not the most common place that these cars leak. In terms of oil pan gasket, that was replaced. I also got an oil pan baffle while we were in there, uh, just to protect the engine from any oil starvation for potential track days. The baffle helps to keep the oil right there so the pump can go ahead and pick it up. And I also got a upgraded oil pump shaft kit which was uh, from Achilles Motorsports. So the E36 has a oil pump nut that is known to back out. And if that oil pump nut backs out, you lost all oil pressure and your engine goes boom. So in order to protect that from happening, we went ahead and changed the oil pump nut and we got that secured as well. So that way we don't ever have to worry about it coming loose. In terms of the cost for parts, for the oil pan gasket, the baffle, and the oil pump shaft kit. Parts cost about $475. Labor hours were about eight hours at $115 an hour. That puts us at $940 for the labor itself. So approximate total for this complete job was $1,400. So that was pretty much for the oil pan gasket, the baffle that needed to be welded on there, and the oil pump nut uh, replacement upgrade. You can tell the theme of this video is increasing costs as we go. And going along with that theme, we're going to number three, which was the largest repair that I had to do on the car. These cars, depending on what you want to do with it, you can either go two ways when it comes to suspension. One, do a complete refresh with stock parts, which means rubber bushings, stock springs and shocks. And you know, your mind can go anywhere you want when it comes to doing a suspension rebuild. But for myself, we went ahead and got ground control coilovers, polyurethane bushings all around, upgraded rubber bushings uh, whatever, wherever they need to be replaced. So as you can see, the cost can go up quite a bit. The third biggest repair I had to do was a complete suspension overhaul, including the bushings on the car. So all bushings were replaced. That included front rear sway bars, control arm bushings, shifter bushings, differential bushings. I also got ground control coilover kit and miscellaneous parts that came along with the repair. In parts alone, I paid about $3,900. And for the labor, which was about 24 hours of labor at $115 an hour, that was about $2,760 in labor with a grand total of $6,700 for a complete suspension overhaul and bushing repair. That is a lot of money. That is, that's a pretty good amount of money. And it's gone. All right, so those are the top three repair items that I think cost the most money in terms of parts and labor. I do want to mention that there is a couple of extra repairs that had to be done on the car as well. Unfortunately, I don't have the receipts for those, but I can give you a general overview of how much things cost in terms of parts and labor. One of the items that I did get replaced when I first purchased the car was my radiator. Uh, eventually, I also did a whole cooling overhaul, which included changing all the coolant hoses, and associated parts with the cooling system. BMWs, especially E36s, are prone to overheating. And once the car overheats, you can get a cracked head, even potentially a cracked block, obviously a blown head gasket. So cooling is probably one of the biggest things I would say to look out for when you first purchase the car. The cooling is definitely something you do not want to just risk, especially if you don't know the history of the car in terms of the hoses. At the very least, get those replaced because coolant not going to where it needs to in these cars can be pretty devastating for the engines. Ask me how I know that. In terms of cooling parts, guys, I did find this kit here on Turner Motorsports. It comes with everything you need, the expansion tank, coolant, the hoses, even a new thermostat housing, thermostat and water pump. That comes along with the kit. And there's also this radiator that I found as well. So for the parts alone in both of these items, it's gonna cost about $540. Labor is gonna cost about four and a half hours to do a complete cooling overhaul. So if we use our average labor cost of $115, that gets us to $520 for a total cost of $1,060 for a cooling overhaul, which actually is, um, 
really not that bad when you think about the potential items that could break if you don't get this address because head gaskets and new motors are not cheap. So far from the items that I listed, doesn't even include any of the fun bits. And when I say fun bits, I mean like the supercharger install. That in itself was super expensive. The supercharger kit that I had bought was a dine-in supercharger kit. It was incomplete uh, when I had purchased it and I knew that to begin with. The reason why I had purchased this particular kit is because I do live in California, which requires a CARB EO number for any modifications to the car. The Dine-In kit, unfortunately, is the only supercharger CARB legal kit that I could purchase here in the state. And buying these kits are extremely rare. When I had purchased that incomplete kit, it cost about $1,800. It pretty much just came with the bracket, the bolts, and the supercharger itself. So I had to pretty much purchase everything else, including the injectors, afterwards. And that cost about $2,000 just in miscellaneous parts. The labor cost about $5,000, <sighs> which was difficult because some of the parts that I had purchased, especially like the after cooler that I had bought from this company, did not know how to put together their own water pump or even know how to assemble their own kits. So obviously there was a bunch of fabrication that, I knew, but that needed to be done to get this kit together. So that was not fun and putting the supercharger together I believe cost me a little more than $8,000 to put it in the car. And now my engine's blown up. <laughs> yeah, was that worth it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I think your, your mind can pretty much go in any direction when it comes to building these cars. If you have one of these cars, I think the biggest issue to really address, guys, is the cooling issue. And then I think after that would be the oiling issue. And then when you have the money to purchase parts for the suspension. If you're thinking about buying one of these cars, I think the biggest takeaway here is doing a pre-inspection, especially if you don't know how to look for these items yourself. Ask them if they have any receipts for any of the work done on the cooling of the car. Just making sure that everything looks correct. You really don't wanna buy a car and not really know what you're getting into, especially if you have a professional go in and do a fine tooth comb of the car they can find all kinds of problems that are wrong. Whatever price you pay to purchase the vehicle, please at the minimum have that same amount, if not double that in repairs alone. Unless of course, you had an owner who pretty much has receipts and can back up the parts and the labor that were done on the vehicle. I also did things on the car such as the Macaw door carts. That was an additional cost in the car. I also did my own vinyl wrap on the vehicle as well. That cost a couple of hundred dollars in parts alone. All these items I did by myself. I did not pay anyone to do labor. Other items as well, it could be your spark plugs and your own oil changes too. So keep that in mind. The more you do, the more you'll save. I work to the best of my ability and I am mad enough to say that I don't know how to work on all parts on this vehicle. So I leave that to the professionals to figure out. I hope that you guys found this video insightful. I really wanted to tell you guys the costs associated with it. Labor can vary from state to state, city to city, and from shop to shop. But this is just something that I really want people to know out there so they can get a rough estimate of how much things can cost if things go south. And for myself, I just really want to inform you guys, uh, my subscribers, my viewers, that you know things aren't always going to be cheap. If you like the vehicle that much, you will pay for it. And when I actually added everything together in this folder, the costs were well above the purchase price of the vehicle. I actually paid more than $21,000 getting this car fixed to where it's at right now. And I purchased the car for $7,800. So for almost about $30,000, I'm $30,000 deep into this vehicle build right now. And and I'm okay. That, I'm okay with that. It makes me happy. It's something that I like to work on. I understand that some people might think it's a waste of money. I honestly don't think it's 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 a waste of money because I enjoy it personally. If that's something that you guys want to work on and enjoy on your cars too, who are we to judge what you do with your money? I don't want any of you guys to be shocked by a car and then saying, hey, it's a big old money waster, it's a money pit because yeah, they're kind of right. It is a money pit. Money waster? Eh, probably not, but money pit? Sure. Anyways guys, that's all I got for today's video. If you find this video useful, insightful, educational, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you wanna follow me on my channel, follow me on my builds. In terms of the E36 guys, updates for that, I do have it back at the house. My mechanic shop is getting his shop renovated right now. The soonest I could probably get my car back in there is gonna be first or second week of January, which is completely fine. I think that'll be a great start to the year. In terms of the engine plans itself, I am super excited to announce what we're doing, but I think I'll leave that for future videos to come. So stay tuned. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Remember, respect your elders. Peace.